All right, my friends, happy Tuesday morning. Is it gonna work? I think it's gonna work here on Facebook. Um, this is gonna be a great little Facebook Live because literally my iPad just like jumped off the screen at me. It just like, <laughs> I caught it in my hands. It like literally popped off the thingy. It's being held on by like, um, what do you call those? The little smashy things on the side. What, are the, what would those be called? Smashy things? <laughs> And I don't know what happened, but it like about shot my eye out. Um, all right, so we're live on Facebook. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, Mandy. Hi, Ruby. And we are now live on Instagram as well. Hi, guys. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. We are going to talk about a, not a very sexy topic this morning, but one that needs to be discussed nonetheless. And we're going to talk about rejection and how to handle rejection in your life and in your business. And I forgot that I forgot to put the hashtag just Jesus on here and I'm actually gonna change the hashtag to no woo woo just Jesus and um, but we're gonna talk about rejection and I have to apologize that I have on zero makeup because um, we are getting ready to do filming all day at my house today but I told them my commitment is that the Lord has asked me to go live Monday through Friday 9 30 a.m. CST for the entire month of November encouraging you in your life and your business with some biblical truths and so we planned the filming around these videos and so makeup will be here in 30 minutes and then this will get taken care of so just know that i love you um all right so we're going to talk about rejection and listen my friends this this is a hard topic both to um i think to hear and i think to experience none of us are exempt from rejection okay not one of us like rejection isn't a matter of when are you going to feel rejected in your life or in your business it's not it's not a matter of if you will it's a matter of when you will every single one of us is going to feel rejection at some point but here's what we do as people right we get like um, a little sideways with it and we feel a little bit um, like we got our pissy pants on um, and we fail to remember that hang on I need more coffee that Jesus himself who walked the earth was probably rejected more than any other human being on the planet and yet we want to be exempt from rejection and that's just not the way it works but I am gonna kind of share with you guys some things that I know um, coming from someone who has faced a ton of rejection in her life and um, and some things that I have learned and some things that I think are gonna help you good morning Courtney hi Brandy and so I'm, I'm glad that this is a perfect topic for you this week I mean I hate that whatever you're going through but listen if you will handle rejection in a biblical manner I'm telling you um, it will open up so many doors and opportunities and and room for blessings in your life if you will handle the rejection in a Christ-like manner. So that's what we're going to talk about. If you're on Facebook, this is a great time for you to share this because somebody in your life is going to need to hear it. Okay, so I wrote down a couple notes so that I do not get off track. All right, here's what I need you to know. First of all, if you are someone who struggles with rejection and you struggle with um, wrapping your head around it and rejection makes you feel like you're stuck, more than likely, you are a people pleaser. And um, you guys know I love like the DISC personality test and so us high S's, okay? Us high S's are the ones that struggle with rejection the most. Like the high D's of the world are the presidents, the people winning the Nobel Peace Prizes. They are the demanding, you know, um, people that are running big companies. Like they have this ability to handle rejection, I think God has wired them in a different way, differently than those of us that are high S personalities. Any other high S's here? High S's are more sensitive. We like stability. Um, we're sweet. We're the sweethearts of the earth. And so when we are rejected, oh man, it's like, ooh, right? like right there right to the heart right also um, what I have noticed is that the enemy will use rejection to really wound the people whose love language is words of affirmation anybody else a love language of words of affirmation so in the five love languages and I didn't even have this in my notes so God's taking this elsewhere okay whatever Lord um, so the five love languages help me review this are um, gifts physical affection words of affirmation acts of service and quality time okay everybody feels most loved in one of those areas let me go through them again you can write down here on Facebook which your what your primary love language is and usually you have two okay so it's words of affirmation do you feel loved when people tell you dude you're a stinking rock star you're awesome what you've done is blessed my socks off thank you so much you're the cat's meow you're the bee's knees 
you're all that and a bag of chips and a bag of powdered donuts. Like if that makes you feel loved, then you're a words of affirmation person and that's me. Or is it gifts? When people buy you things, do you feel most loved? Is it quality time? Um, my best friend Laura is a quality time girl. She needs FaceTime. She needs coffee dates. She needs time for us to actually sit like arm to arm. Quality time. Um, what else? Acts of service. Do you feel most loved when somebody sweeps your stinking kitchen floor? If somebody wants, you know, to do something nice for you, are you like, keep your stinking gifts, come vacuum out my truck? Like, if that's you, then that's acts of service. What was the other one? Physical affection. Hugs. So, my theory is this. This is just my theory. Um, my theory is that the enemy's like, oh, She's a words of affirmation person. Where can I wound her word, the worst? And that's with rejection. It's with rejection. Because a lot of times, rejection is going to be tied to words. And words are what are so wounding. Am I right? And so, listen, um, every single one of us is going to go through rejection at some point. Every single one of us. You can be rejected by your family. Um, you can be, and, and this is especially true for um, perhaps those of us, those of you who don't know our um, fathers here on earth have not met um, our parents. If you're adopted, then those, those roots of rejection, those seed plantings of rejection can start super early. They can start super early. And, and let me just tell you that God's here um, to bind up those wounds, to set you free from that so that you can live a free life, not hanging on to that rejection forever. Um, some of you have been super wounded by your peers. You've been super rejected by your industry. You feel like a total black sheep in the industry that you're working in. Let me just tell you, God isn't all about all that nonsense, okay? And we're going to talk about it in a second. Some of you have been completely rejected by the snarky chicks who have the store up the street and they never include you in any of the things. Can I get a yes and an amen? All of us are dealing with rejection from somewhere and at some level, okay? But here are some of the things that I know to be true about rejection. Hear me out, okay? Sometimes we have to be rejected by man to rely solely on God. And I'm gonna say that again. Because what the enemy intends for evil, God will turn for good if we'll allow him to. So the enemy's intending to use the rejection in your life to keep you stuck, uh, to, to make you backpedal, um, to make you doubt what you heard the Lord say. He'll use rejection to have you turn tail and run. He'll use rejection so that you walk away from relationships in your life that you shouldn't. He'll use rejection um, to, just, to just stunt your spiritual growth. He uses it in all sorts of ways. But the Lord, if you will let him, will use the rejection that you're feeling from people. And if you'll rely solely on him to get you through that season of rejection, to get you through those words that left you rejected, whatever they did to you that left you feeling rejected, it will teach you to rely solely on God and not on man. Because the approval of man is a snare. The approval of man, like if you're living your life especially you creatives. Man, I love you. I love you. But here's, here's how it works with creative people. Um, creatives base their worth on whether or not people buy the thing they make, order the stuff that they do. Um, you know, if you're, if you're home making sugar cookies and nobody's buying your sugar cookies, I mean, that's rejection right there, right? And so creative people, especially, you have to guard yourself and guard your heart against these feelings of rejection. If you will let God use the rejection in your life, and if you will rely solely on him to get you through it and not on man, God will use it for good, I promise you. There's so many times when I look at um, the times when I have felt most rejected in my life, and it also was the times I felt most desperate. And unfortunately, sometimes God has to use um, a season of feeling um, desperate in order to bring us back to our first love, in order to get us on our knees, in order to, um, I, I know that the whole reason Jason and I even started, Mr. Magic, for those of you who don't know his real name, started going back to church. I got saved as a teenager, lost my mind for a good decade through college and in my 20s when a lot of us are knuckleheads. And the way God got my booty back in church was, and I've been very honest with this, um, after the first year of marriage, Jason and I were like, is this even worth it? Should we chuck it now before we have kids? We've got a hot stinking mess on our hands. But God used that. He used that feeling of desperation of, wow, we're idiots. Um, I'm an idiot. He's an idiot. We're all idiots. 
to get our butts back in church. So God will use the rejection that you've felt from your family, from your peers, from your industry, from all the things, if you will let him. Thank you, Rihanna, for saying that. I'm sure I probably just totally didn't say your name right, but thank you. And thank you guys for sharing this. I appreciate you. I want you to know that if you feel rejected, if you feel like you're not a part of the club, if you feel like you're not a part of the group, if you feel like you never quite fit in, I want you to know you're in a really powerful position because God always uses those people. He always in the Bible all up over the place. He used the outsiders, the people that didn't fit in, the people that didn't look like they belong, the people that nobody thought should ever be X, Y, Z. Here, here's what I know from my friend Chastity. You guys know Chastity Stemmons. She's the one that, um, she traveled with me to Business Boutique. Um, she picked out all of my outfits and had me looking way better than all this. But Chastity taught me this thing and I wanna teach it to you, okay? Um, God's choice is often not the people's choice. And that is really good. I hope somebody will tweet that or write that in the comments here on Facebook. God's choice is often not the people's choice. And so if you're feeling outside of, you're feeling like, all the other people in your industry are all doing their thing. They've got their arms hooked and they're singing kumbaya. And all the people in your little tiny small town are all working and networking with each other, but they keep leaving you out. Honey, you're in a good position. God can use you. He can do something with you because you're not relying on people to elevate you. You're relying on God to, take, to do something with your something. And that's a really powerful place to be in. God can use that. That's why all over in the Bible, he used people that were outside of. They, they weren't the ones that looked like the king. They weren't the ones that looked like they should um, have the gifts or whatever. They were always outside of. So if you're outside of, you, you need to almost be grateful for that. Thank you, Jesus, that you've set me apart. He has set you apart, friend. I'm telling you, he has set you apart. All right, let me get back to my notes here. Here's what I know. Most rejection in my life, and I'm speaking out of personal experience here, has come right before a huge breakthrough. Most rejection. If I will deal with the rejection in a Christ-like manner, um, I'm not saying you have to deal with it perfect, but I am saying that you do have to deal with it in the right way. There was um, an instance about, I would say, let me think of how many years ago, five or six years ago, um, just being completely transparent here. Not a good time to share the video because I'm just talking to just a couple of my friends here. No, I'm literally driving down the road and I remember even the truck that I was driving in and I remember I was going to Target and I'm driving down the road and I had been really rejected by um, someone who I loved very deeply and, um, and took it so personally. And for a couple of years, I mourned the loss of um, a friendship that was very, very dear to me. And, um, and felt like I had tr made efforts to try to own up to my piece of the responsibility. Um, felt like I had, um, you know, tried to apologize, tried to mend things, but it, it just wasn't happening, which left me feeling very rejected. And, um, and I can remember just a lot of days I would wake up and that would be the first thing on my mind. It wouldn't be the Lord. It wouldn't be my family. It would be the loss of that thing and just how rejected I felt. And this went on for a couple of years. And so, um, and if any of you have ever lost a relationship that is really dear to you, you know exactly the pain that I'm talking about. And she, and I'm sure she felt pain too. I mean, we were both good people. We just didn't do it well together. Um, and so I can remember after a couple of years of that, I'm driving down the road one day, putzing around at 54 miles an hour because I'm below the speed limit, y'all, as a rule follower. And so I <laughs> putzing down the road and I'm headed to Target. And I distinctly remember I heard the Lord in my head who said, Jennifer, I have so much I want to give you, but you can't get unstuck from that. And until you can get unstuck from that, you're still stuck. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, like I have, I have wallowed in that rejection for so long, for a couple of years, you guys, I wallowed in that rejection and I, um, I couldn't, I didn't know how to get past it because it just, um, it just, it broke me in places and, um, it offended me quite frankly in other places. And, um, and I was clinging to those feelings of rejection 
And I know that it was that day that there was a shift that came in my mind. Something broke off of me that day. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm laying it down. I'm done with it. It does not deserve the energy or the thoughts that I'm still giving it. I've got this amazing family. I've got this amazing business. I have 99 people in my world that love me. And I'm so clinging to the one that's rejecting me. You're right. It's well past time to get over this. And it was that day when I laid that down. was like, I have, I have been rejected, but I can't like live there and pet that thing anymore. I just can't do it. It literally was that day things shifted in my life and shifted in my business. I am telling you the absolute truth. God could not do something with me in my business until I got rid of my stinking thinking about the rejection of that relationship. And that's the honest to goodness truth. I think that we are often most rejected right before we have major breakthroughs. And I think we're often most rejected right through we have major promotions. And listen, I'm not talking about promotions in your office. I'm talking about promotion spiritually. I don't care if you get the, the office with the corner window. I care is God moving you to the next level spiritually. There are promotions in the spiritual world. I believe that with everything in me. And so if God's trying to promote you to the next level, I do think he will allow you to go through um, a testing where you are rejected. So it's almost like this, like it's almost like this, okay? And for those of you who have been in my coaching groups of any kind, you will have heard me talk about this before. Here's what I think God does. I'm wearing pajama pants. Is this appropriate for me to stand up? Um, sure, okay, we're, we're going with it, okay? Here's what I think it looks like. All right, this, this could get really awkward because literally I'm waiting for makeup to get here. Okay, here's what I think happens. So there's a promotion, right? And, and God's right here with you. And then crap sometimes hits the fan. Literally crap hits the fan. This person's rejecting you. This person's pissed off. Your parents don't understand. This one won't talk to you. And it's like God's going right here. And it's like me and God are doing this. And he's like, well, can you handle it? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And God's like, well, can you handle it, girl? Because if you can handle it here, then we can go ahead. And then I'm like, okay, all right, God, I think I've got this. All right, then we can go here. And then there's more rejection. But it's different at this level. And then there's more people. And then there's more things that the enemy throws with me. And me and God are like, can you handle it, girl? I don't know. And I got to work through all the crap at this level. And God's like, can you handle it? Because if you can handle it here, then we can go forward. And then you get promoted to the next level. That is just me with probably really bad theology, my friends. But that's how I feel like it works. Especially if you're a business person. Because some of you have gotten bad reviews on Facebook. And you're just, you're, you're, your panties are all knotted up over that. And I love you, but if you're going to let one bad Facebook review, like, blow your cover and just, you know, turn you sideways, like, what, what's God supposed to do with you at the next level if you can't handle it at that one? Especially in business. You have to be able to deal with that stuff. Your partner may have absolutely, your business partner may have absolutely dumped you. But can you get over that rejection? Can you work it out? Can you, can you get over it? Can you get your stuff together? Can you allow God to heal your heart? Can you allow God's love to be greater than that rejection? Because if so, then God's got something he can work with and you can go to the next level and you can go to the next level. But you can't get stuck on a, on a bad Facebook review. You can't get stuck because you applied to be a vendor at a booth and they rejected you. Because if you get stuck on those little things, but you're like, God, but I want this big thing. He's like, well, sweet pea, you're still stuck on those little things. You want me to give you all this, but you're still stuck on nonsense. That's how I think rejection works. I could be so off guard, but I hope that that blesses somebody. Um, I think God is really concerned with how we handle the rejection because we are going to get it. So will you hold on to that crap for years? I held on to that rejection for several years and, um, my family suffered because of it. The friends that loved me suffered because of it. I suffered because of it because I just refused to let it go. And so I think you have to determine if you're willing to let it go. Are you willing to learn from it? Are you willing to learn from it? Are you willing to even take responsibility for your piece of that? Because that teachable spirit that created me, O oh Lord, a pure heart, that here I am, Lord, use me, teach me, teach me, that God can do something with that. That's so moldable. All right, what else did I want to talk to you? I know that for those of you who have rejection that you have not dealt with yet, 
I think that when you have rejection that you are clinging to, and I'll use myself as the example because I did it for a couple years, when you cling to that rejection, I think it leaves you wide open for um, coping mechanisms. I think it leaves you wide open for bad relationships. Think of all the women you know who go from one bad boyfriend to another bad boyfriend to another, you know, or one bad marriage to another bad marriage to another bad marriage. When you don't deal with your rejection, those are the types of things that you cling to. When you don't deal with your rejection, you'll be tempted to slander. You'll be tempted to talk about the thing. You'll be tempted to, you know, talk negatively about the person that's hurt you. Um, and so we have to be so careful with all of those things. So I want to real quick before I get ready to pray for you. And I think team makeup is here. Yay. Awesome. Um, it's not going to be a matter of when you're going to be rejected. It's a matter of, or no, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, because everybody will. And so I love that saying, but nevertheless, she persisted. So I, so here, here's the key, you guys, for those of you who are in the middle of feeling rejected, for the, in the middle of um, people turning away from you, in the middle of feeling like you don't belong in your industry, whatever. Can you grasp a hold of that, nevertheless, she persisted spirit? Because that's the thing. Like, okay, they've all turned against me. All right. I'm still doing what God's asking me to do. That needs to be your heart position. Even if the whole, if your whole family does not understand what you're doing and they think that you're being a knucklehead and now they, they don't want to talk to you because you've left the family business and you're going to do something you feel God's calling you to do. But nevertheless, will you persist? I wrote down some people that have persisted, okay? Because I want you to know this. I want you to know this. Dr. Seuss, who was the author of Dr. Seuss? I can't even remember who the actual author was, but the, the dude that wrote the Dr. Seuss books, he was rejected 27 times, 27 times by publishers. Michael Jordan was rejected as a sophomore for the basketball team. Didn't make the, soft, or the basketball team as a sophomore. Rejected. Went on to be what? One of the best basketball players of all time? I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing about basketball. All I just know is Michael Jordan, and I use that story all the time with my boys. Walt Disney who was from Kansas City, was fired from the Kansas City Star because they said he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Oprah was fired for one of her first jobs. Uh-oh, hang on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry, Instagram. Um, and I was even thinking this morning about Joanna Gaines. Um, I just love Chip and Joe. I've had the pleasure of meeting them several times. They're amazing. And I sat in on one of Joanna's, um, like before she was quite to this size. Joanna had like this night in Waco where I think there were 600 of us or something that went and we did like a craft and Chip and Joe spoke and Joanna talked on stage about how um, her and Chip's like original TV things that they sent into the TV networks were rejected. And one of the things they said about Joe is that she was cold. And I remember thinking, she's like the warmest woman on the planet. Like she's the sweetest thing ever. She touched my hair like this one time. And it was like the heavens opened an angel song. Hi, Amy. Hey. Hi, sweetie. I'm almost done. And, and so I was, you know, thinking, I mean, even Jojo and Chip were rejected originally. I'm telling you. If you, if you have been rejected or are in the middle of a season of being rejected, you almost need to rejoice. You almost need to rejoice, get your crap together, figure out how you're going to handle this spiritually so that you can get past it because God's got something great on the other side of this rejection. All right, I'm going to pray for you guys. Thank you so much on Facebook for sharing this, by the way, and Instagram. I just love you. So, Oh, Father God, I just thank you for the day, Lord. I thank you for um, technology working. I thank you, Lord. What an amazing world we live in that we even have a Facebook and an Instagram that I can go live and talk to 800 people at once. It's in a crazy, crazy world. And I thank you for it, Father. And I thank you for these people listening. And I thank you, Lord, that you are getting ready to promote so many of them, both spiritually and in the physical realm, Lord. Um, and I pray, Father God, that for those people who are, who are sitting here listening to me talk and to, and to pray, Father, that where they have been rejected, Lord, that you would come up and you would just bind up the wounds that they have from the people that they love, from strangers, from the internet. Lord, bind up um, the areas of their heart that they need to be bound, Lord, and heal them in the ways that only you can heal them. Father, I, um, I can look back now and I can thank you for the areas in my life where I have been rejected because I've seen your faithfulness, Father God, and I've seen how you've taken those, um, those 
seasons of rejection and how you've used them for my good. And Father, I pray that for the people listening to me right now, that you would take their season of rejection and that you would use it for their good. And I pray, Lord, that their hearts would be sensitive to the healing you want to bring them. I pray, Father, for the women that are stuck right now, that they would seek help in the name of Jesus. I pray for the ones who are clinging to their rejection like it's a stuffed animal, Father God, that you would, um, you would show them, Lord, in their quiet time where their wrong thinking is and how they can get past it, Lord. Father, I pray that you actually, that they want to get past it. Sometimes, ladies, we stay stuck in rejection because it feels good. And it's the story that we've known all of our life. And so that's where we stay comfortable. And the Lord has so much better for you. So much better for you. Rejection doesn't have to be the stamp that is on your life. He's got freedom awaiting for you if you'll let him heal those things up. Lord, I pray you just come alongside every man and woman that's listening to this Facebook Live right now. And Lord, I know... Um, that your banner of truth um, is bigger than any seed of rejection or any feelings of rejection. Lord, I just, I thank you for these people. I ask, Lord, for you to give them the eyes to see and the ears to hear what you want them to get out of this Facebook Live, out of this Instagram Live, Lord. I pray, Father, that where they have rejected other people, Lord, would you prompt them to recall that memory and to make apologies and amends where necessary, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we just um, that we can count on you to love us even when man rejects us. And there's no greater thing on this side of heaven. So, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for this day. I pray for blessings on all these people. I pray for, um, for just prosperity over them, for enough, Lord, for mo enough money in the bank account, enough, um, enough of everything that they need, Lord. And just ask that you would come in and that you would heal the areas of their hearts and their life, Lord, that need healed it and the healing that only you can do. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends. Thanks for being here. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate you. I'm about to go get some makeup on. And we're getting ready. Um, for those of you, I have like my inner circle coaching group, which we've got 2,500 men and women in there right now, small business owners. It's amazing. And then once a year, I launch my Creator's Roadmap, which is like a six-week course. It's like a crash course on um, making money online. And so we are not, that won't be open until February. And so, but anyway, what we're doing today is the films, the filming leading up to that. So I'll be over on Instagram stories um, and I'll be doing some stuff there with hair and makeup and outfits and all the things. So I will perhaps see you over on Instagram stories, Facebook. I'll be back again, um, 8 30 tomorrow morning and we'll see what God wants me to talk about then. I hope this was a blessing to you and thank you guys for sharing it. Do you know we hit 350,000 people on Facebook yesterday? That's a lot. 350,000 followers. Thank you. You're awesome. Bless you guys. Bye-bye.